Now, as you can see, we're in Final Cut Pro, and one thing that editors do a lot of is text creation. And these days, one thing we like to do is we like to add as much 3D text as possible, because in a lot of cases, you can add really cool effects in 3D. The problem that we used to have was, was that it took really super high-end 3D graphic stations to create these effects that took days to render. Well, now we can create these effects very quickly and very easily right from within the comfort of our own nonlinear editing application. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to do right now. So let's first of all come over here to our generator drop down and I'm just going to add a slug in here. And we're going to start simple and we're going to work our way up from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the slug and I'm just going to drag it and drop it into my timeline. And I'm going to select the slug and I'm going to navigate up to effects. I'm going to come down to video filters and I'm going to come up to BCC7 3D objects and I'm going to select BCC Extruded Tech. Now the great thing about what I'm going to show you is, is that if you're using BCC 6, this will work exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select BCC Extruded Text, and once the effect has been applied, you'll notice that my timeline has turned red, and if I wanted to, I could come over to Real Time Extreme and change it to Unlimited Real Time, and you'll notice the bar will change to orange, so it will play back in real time, but I'll just switch it back to Safe. I'm just going to double click on my slug and I'm going to come to the filters tab and you'll see now that I have the BCC extruded text effect applied to my slug and what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the text and as soon as I click on that you'll see now that I have my very familiar BCC extruded text window which looks identical to the Boris 3D text effect that we have from within Final Cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in BCC7 in my big scary impact font and I'm simply going to click apply and as soon as I do you'll notice that I now have text that has a kind of a cool little bevel around it that sort of gives it a fake 3D look except this look isn't fake. If I come down here and I come to transformations and I just navigate down here a little bit to rotate and I'm just going to drag my window out a little bit here just so that we can see what we're doing and you'll notice that if I rotate this it is actually 3D. Color grading is the big thing these days and, and one thing I always tell my students is that every shot in your show promo always needs to have color correction whether you think it does or not and one common effect that a lot of producers like is the effect that I like to call the Schindler's List look and what that is is you'll have an entire scene in black and white except for one element that's in color. So right here we have our coffee commercial and what we want to do is we want to have this element here of the coffee cup being in color and everything else in black and white. You'll notice that when I select the layer I've already gone in and I've masked out the coffee cup. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to start simple and we're going to work our way up from there. So we're just going to assume that this is just a still shot that doesn't move. So you can see that I've gone in and I've masked out the coffee cup. And what I'm going to do is with the layer selected I'm going to come up to effect and I'm going to come down to BCC7 color blurs and I'm going to select three-way color grade. What we're going to do is we're just going to hide this for right now because we don't want to adjust the color of anything. What we want to do is just adjust the saturation. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to separate the foreground from the background and that is where our mask is going to come into play. So the first thing I'm going to do is do that separation and where I do that is right here where it says mask shape and you can see right now it's set to off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to be the host mask and now all I have to do is I need to tell the effect what the mask I want to use. So when I call up the mask drop down you'll see over here right beside host mask I can select mask one and as soon as I select it oh, nothing's happened. Well something has happened. What has happened is is that the effect now knows that the coffee cup what's inside the mask is the foreground and everything else is the background. Now you're probably thinking to yourself well how would I know that? Well up here under render I can come to the drop down and say just view matte and you can see now that I have a foreground element and now I have a background element. I can drop down outside color correction. You'll see we can now get in and we can use our color wheels for our background color correction but all I want to do is simply come down to saturation and drag it all the way out and now you'll see that I have an element where my coffee cup is in color and everything else is in black and white. Now, I know what you're thinking, well that's just a still image. Well, like I said, we're going to start simple and we're going to work our way up from there because there's a lot of new features in After Effects CS5 that are going to make our life a lot simpler when we need to do things like have this mask track when our shot moves.